Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for our next Facebook Live session. I'm Susanna Hatfield with ATBS. Um, for those of you who don't know much about ATBS, it stands for American Truck Business Services, and we provide taxes, accounting, bookkeeping to owner-operator truck drivers, and we've been doing this for the past 20 years. Um, today, we're going to be talking about important tax moves to make before the end of the year. Uh, we're going to be posting some links to some helpful articles on our website that you can check out during the broadcast or afterwards. And um, if, please feel free to type in your questions um, and let us know what you're thinking. We'll make sure to answer those at the end of the broadcast. Or if you watch this later, we'll go ahead and um, type those answers back to you when we get a chance. And today, um, to answer some of those questions about um, what's changing with tax uh, reform and what owner operators need to do before the end of the year, I am joined by our manager of enterprise services, Michael Schneider. Michael, thanks for being here today. Yeah, thanks, Susanna, and thank you all for joining us. Uh, really hope you've had a profitable year and looking forward to answering your questions today. Great. So we'll jump right into it. Um, first of all, let's talk about buying assets before the end of the year. Sure. So if you're in need of a new truck or a piece of um, expensive equipment, right now might actually be the best time for you to buy that before the end of the year. Um, Michael, can you tell us why that is? Sure. Yeah. And this is a common question that we're getting. Uh, the tax law has allowed for a 100% deducting of um, depreciation, which is called bonus depreciation. Uh, so the first reason that this is great, obviously, is 100% deduction on your tax return for that new piece of equipment. Uh, the second reason is because uh, in the prior rules, the tax deduction for bonus depreciation was limited only to new assets. Uh, so now we've got new and used assets uh, can be used with bonus depreciation in 2018. And I should also mention that this is for any asset that you've placed in service September 27th of 2017 all the way to January 1st of 2023. Uh, the third reason that this is really great, as you guys may know already, depreciation is treated just like any other expense on your tax return. So uh, that could be office supplies, truck lease, insurance. Those are all deducted from your taxable income. So is depreciation. So when I say 100%, if you buy an asset for $100,000, you would get a $100,000 deduction on your tax return. OK, great. Um, but before everyone goes out and makes big purchases to take advantage of this deduction, um, what are some things to consider before going out and doing that? Sure. Uh, one of the things I always tell my clients at ATBS is if you don't need it, don't buy it. Uh, a tax deduction is great to have, but it doesn't necessarily need, mean that you should go out and spend your resources on new equipment. Uh, so if you do need some upgrades or uh, some additional equipment for your business and it's the right time to do that and you're in a good position to do that, absolutely, now is a great time to do that. Uh, but there's by no means forcing yourself to do that it is maybe not a good idea. So uh, just weigh through those options. Depreciation isn't, isn't everything. Sure. Um, let's go ahead and talk about um, per diem next. Um, so this year, per diem has been a pretty big topic for a couple of different reasons. Um, tax reform made some changes to it, and then also the rates increased in October. So what do owner-operators need to know about this year's tax return in terms of per diem? Yeah, per diem is a huge deduction for owner-operators, uh, and we want to make sure that you guys are both substantiating that expense in case the IRS asks questions, and calculating it correctly so that you can maximize that deduction each year on your tax return. Uh, so you, likely all of you are familiar that the rate has been $63 a day for a full day uh, and a little bit less than that for a partial day. Uh, the rate actually changed on October 1st of 2018. So some of you may not be aware of that. It is now $63. So it went from 60, I'm sorry, $66. It went from $63 a day to $66 a day. Um, keep in mind that only 80% of that is actually reported as a deduction on your tax return. Uh, so what that means is a full day would be deducted at $52.80 and a partial day would be deducted at $39.60. Great. And then what is kind of a good way for tax um, for taxpayers to keep track of that? Is the calendar a good way to, yeah. to do that? Okay. Yeah. So well, what ATS really recommends is just get a simple 12-month calendar, keep it in the truck with you. And when you have a full day away from home, mark an X through that day. Uh, if you're returning from a long trip or going out on your next trip, uh, mark a slash through that day. It's a really easy way to keep track of your full days and your partial days. 
Uh, it is not going to be considered substantiation for IRS standards, so make sure you're keeping a copy of your electronic logs and or your settlements. Both is great, uh, but do definitely keep a copy. The, the calendar just makes it really easy to calculate it and uh, give it to your tax preparer to make sure you're getting that deduction that's maximum value. Perfect. All right, so let's change uh, topics a little bit and talk about the qualified business income deduction. So this is a brand new um, deduction that came up with the recent tax reform. Um, people have probably heard it as QBI as well. Um, can you tell us a little bit how that works and what, how um, owner operators can take advantage of that? Yeah, this is a uh, brand new with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. And I like to give a little bit of history here because uh, Congress didn't initially have this in the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. They actually added it a little bit later before it was passed. Uh, and the reason um, for that was that they gave a deduction to C corporations, big businesses, big companies, uh, and they were kind of on a progressive tax rate before that was up to 35%, and they've now been uh, reduced to a flat tax rate of 21%. So that, that's a huge change for big businesses, um, although those are C corporations. So they went back in and they wanted to give a cut to the smaller businesses, the owner operators, the self-employed individuals, who may not have um, these big C corporations. So what they did is they introduced this QBI, Qualified Business Income, and what that is is a 20% deduction of your self-employed activity. So pretty simple uh, rule to begin with. There are some stipulations on income that I'll go through here briefly. I like to explain it as three categories. Uh, so the first category is if you are under the income limitations. If you're single, that is $157,500 of taxable income, so total income uh, from your household. If that is below $157,500, you qualify. Don't worry about it, you're gonna get the 20%. If you are married, that is uh, total taxable income of the household below $315,000. Uh, that's an easy category. If you're below those, you get it. Uh, each of those has a range then. The married folks have a $100,000 range from 315 to 415. Uh, single folks have a range of 50,000. So 157 to 205, or how are 257 to 207, excuse me. Um, if you're in between that range, then you have to do kind of a quasi calculation. You're phased out of some of your allowed deduction. Uh, that's the second category. The third category is really the most complicated, but I, I doubt a lot of people will run into it. They're for the more wealthy folks that are actually above both of those ranges. Okay. Uh, and that'll get a little more complicated if you're above those ranges. Okay. Um, so this is, uh, again, a brand new deduction. It's a little bit complicated. There's a lot of numbers to digest there. So if you have questions about this um, QBI deduction, please give us a call. Um, our phone number is 866-920-2827. Um, feel free to give us a call whenever you get a chance or send us an email or send us a comment on Facebook and we'll make sure to answer those questions for you. Sure, um, and, and I can run through a, a quick example because we did just go over a lot, so I'd like to provide a quick numerical sure. example. Uh, let's say you're self-employed. Um, you're going to qualify for this QBI deduction. Let's say you made $65,000. Um, so this is after all expenses. This is your take home taxable income. You've deducted insurance, fuel, maintenance, all of the above. Uh, so you've got 65,000 of taxable income. 20% uh, of that, which is the QBI allowance, is 13,000. Uh, so in that tax bracket, you'd be in the new 12% tax bracket as an individual, and you would be saving about $1,500. Okay. So that's a new tax savings that is just brand new. Everybody's just pay, gonna pay less taxes this year if you're self-employed. Awesome. That's great news. Um, another way that owner operators can save some money on their taxes this year is um, to consider becoming taxed as an S corporation. Um, so how can changing that business structure uh, help some owner operators and who should consider doing that? Sure. Yeah. And the QBI actually kind of plays into this because it opened up this book now. It's like, okay, I have an LLC or I'm a sole proprietor disregarded. Uh, what should I do? Should I make an entity? Not necessarily. So uh, the QBI is, is going to cover all pass-through entities, and everybody is considered a pass-through entity. Now, if you're not an employee and you're not a C corporation, you're a pass-through entity. Uh, so don't worry about it from that standpoint. But an S corporation may additionally save you taxes. Uh, so I'll go through that. And ATBS kind of has a break-even point, if you will, of about 65000 to 75000 if you're consistently taking that home annually, 
that's the range that you're going to break even and save some money. Uh, the reason I say break even is because obviously creating an S corporation is going to cost you something. You're going to hire some professionals. You're going to start payroll services. There's going to be some cost involved with setting up a, an S corporation. Uh, so the savings that that would give you would cover the cost and save you money. Okay. Um, so I'll go through a couple of uh, reasons for that. The S corporation is not going to be 100% subject to self-employment tax, and that's really where the savings comes from. So I'll, I'll give you a quick example, LLC um, and S corporation. 100% of what an LLC earns or a sole proprietor earns is subject to both income tax and self-employment tax. An S corporation is subject to the same income tax, no changes. However, the S corporation is going to be required to pay a reasonable salary to the owner. So that reasonable salary will still be subject to self-employment tax, which is, uh, if you're not familiar, Social Security and Medicare tax. Uh, but anything over and above that uh, wage that the S corporation earns is not subject to self-employment tax. Okay. Um, so that's where the savings comes in. That self-employment tax that I'm talking about is about 15%, it's 15.3%. So that savings could be significant, mm -hmm. um, both depending on how much your S corporation is earning and how much you're paying in a reasonable salary. Okay. Uh, so let's go through a quick numerical example. Uh, let's say you earn 60,000 and that LLC, as I explained, would be 100% taxed on both income tax and self-employment tax. Uh, now you're an S corporation earning 60,000 and you pay a $40,000 uh, reasonable salary. So again, like I mentioned, that 40,000 is subject to the self-employment and the income tax. However, that additional 20, 60,000 minus 40, is not subject to self-employment tax, and there's about three, I'm sorry, three thousand uh, dollars tax savings. Okay, great. Um, all right, changing gears a little bit again. Um, this is now this is important every year, not just this year, um, but make sure that you're staying on top of your quarterly tax estimate. And for those of you who are newer owner operators, you probably aren't used to doing this and may not understand why that's um, necessary. So Michael, can you go through and explain kind of why um, it's so important for owner operators to be paying their taxes quarterly? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, as an owner operator, if you're not already aware, nobody is sending taxes to the IRS on your behalf. It's all on you. Uh, so it's highly recommended that you send all your quarterly taxes in uh, each quarter. That's four times a year and the upcoming one here is January 15th of 2019. Uh, so we've got a little bit of time yet to make that if you're if you're listening to this live. Um, you wanna make your estimate before that date to avoid penalties and interest. Uh, so generally you would avoid penalties and interest if you pay at least 90% of your expected tax balance or tax liability, uh, or you earned less than $1,000. You would not be subject to those penalties. Uh, so sending in your quarterly taxes, uh, if you're sending them late, you could still be penalized for sending those late, uh, penalized by the IRS, uh, but that penalty is not significant. It's about 2%, uh, so not something to really worry about too much, but you, we highly recommend, obviously, that next year going into 2019, you make those quarterly payments so you don't have to worry about that penalty. You're putting right. more money in your pocket. Right. In addition to the penalty, um, it's not good to have a huge tax bill at the end of the year that you weren't expecting um, it's much better to make those payments and for smaller payments instead of one big payment at the end of the year um if you're not sure how much to pay for your quarterly taxes or you don't know when to pay them um that's actually a service that we provide so please you know give us a call send us an email um, and we can help walk you through that process um the last thing that i wanted to ask you about michael today um is why it would be important to make um, a contribution to your IRA, um, your individual retirement account, um, what kind of deductions you can get from that, um, and why an end of year contribution uh, is so important. Absolutely, yeah, and I really like the IRA deduction. We're talking about a traditional IRA would give you a, a tax deduction, assuming you are below certain earning levels, uh, which, which are pretty high, so most people would qualify for this. Uh, if you make a deduction to an, a traditional IRA, the limit on that deduction is 5,500. It's the, also the contribution limit. So you can put up to 5,500 into a traditional IRA uh, each year. And the reason I like this deduction so much is because you're keeping your money, putting it into a retirement account for the future, and you're getting a tax deduction. So that money is still really yours. It's in a different account. 
uh, earning its uh, in interest or, or you know, value growing there, and uh, you also got a tax deduction for it. Perfect. Great. So I'm going to check now to see if we have any questions from the audience. Um, I'm just going to refresh my page really quick. Uh, while you're doing that, another great thing I, I forgot I put in my notes here was that in 2019, starting on January 1st, the IRA contribution goes to 6000 Oh, that's so great. So an extra $500 there. Uh, if uh, you're over age 50, you also get an additional $1,000 uh, called an IRA catch-up contribution. So if, if you're starting retirement a little bit late or even you're on track and you're over 50 now, you can boost that deduction and that contribution. Perfect. All right, so pulling up the questions here, the first one here, it says, I have heard that um, company drivers are no longer allowed to get per diem. Is that true? Yes, and that's kind of unfortunate uh, kind of byproduct. I don't know if it was intended when they wrote the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, but what they did in the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act is eliminated Schedule A employee deductions. And if you are a company driver, you are an employee, and those deductions unfortunately are gone. That's where per diem was reported on your tax return. Uh, some questions I've received are, well, what if I'm an S corporation or a partnership and I'm paying myself wages? Uh, well, that's fine. You can still get that deduction. You are considered an employee, uh, but you want to make sure that you get that per diem on your W-2 to show that the company has reimbursed you or paid for your per diem. And in that instance, the business can still deduct per diem. Okay. So businesses are 100% allowed a per diem deduction. Okay. That's good to clarify. I know there was a lot of confusion, especially when the Tax um, Cuts and Jobs Act was first released about some people thought owner operators couldn't take it, um, but owner operators still can, company drivers cannot. Yep. Um, another question here that has to do with depreciation, uh, do you have to take the bonus depreciation? No, uh, it is considered automatic, so you would have to elect out of taking the bonus depreciation. So really what, what the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act is doing is encouraging purchases. They want the economy to grow. They want businesses to go out and buy new equipment. I kind of talked about that. If, if you're not in that position where you want to take that full deduction or you're not buying new equipment, but you're not required to do that. You're not required to take the bonus deduction. Mm -hmm. So you would elect out of that on your tax return and you're still allowed the other deduction methods uh, to be that regular depreciation or section 179 depreciation. Okay, all right, great. So I think those are all the questions from the audience for right now. Um, feel free to keep posting those after the fact and we will um, get the, to those when we get a chance. Um, let's see, and then for just make sure that you check all the different links that we've posted on our comment page for this uh, broadcast. And then um, I think that's about it for us today. So we will close it up, drive safely and have a good holiday season and a good end of the year. And um, be, feel free to just message us if you have any questions. Thanks.